Hey Joburg, how are you guys doing? So I'm here at the Epsi Gallery in Joburg Central to check some of the finalists of this year's La Atelier Awards. I'm Paul Bayless and I'm the Apsa Art Museum Curator and what we have behind me here today is the media breakfast for the top 10 finalists what we, um, for the Lightly Art Competition. So what we do is, as Apsa and with our partner Sonava, we sponsor the Lightly and this is the 32nd year of the competition and it's looking at identifying and nurturing young talent. Artists aged 21 through to 35 may enter the competition. And that's really artists in the territories where we as Barclays Africa have a presence. So we've got five prizes, um, all of them residency based, with the main prize being um, six months in Paris and 300,000 rand cash for the artist, plus a solar exhibition that opens here in the Epsa catalog um, two years after winning, so it gives them time to produce work and so on, and with that we produce a printed catalogue. So it's really about identifying talent across the continent in terms of our visual arts, and then nurturing the talent and helping the artists grow and mature. So that's really what we are about. Okay, so Marl, you are one of the 10 finalists for this year's competition. Tell me a little bit about yourself before we get into your artwork. Um, I've, I've been practicing art for like 15 years. I've done a BA in painting and a master's in contemporary art and design practice. A few things inspire me to make work, make art. One of them is issues around gender and human rights. And um, something that happened to me in streets of Nairobi and made me think about okay what is that thing that like reinforces oppression against women and I started thinking about um, proverbs and I started researching about proverbs um, African proverbs about women and what I found was that most of the problems about women in Africa are negative and the tiny bit that are positive are about motherhood and this, this piece is about that. The big, the big structure, the stool and the cowbells hold the negative ones. The small altar holds the positive ones and that board over there encourages the audience to add their own voice. Why the stool and the cowbells? Because I was trying to have like metaphorically um, like uh, represent the commodification and objectification of women and that alter I mean motherhood is seen as this like holy like very like brilliant stage for women but if you see inside there are put off candles which somehow takes away that agency from women in this situation because um, the I mean the reason in the positive um, Proverbs that women are portrayed, I mean, women are only seen as positive when they're mothers, is that they are seen as op like objects of reproduction. Uh, and then that, that other word, that part of the work is important to me. I hope that the audience would interact with it because I think one of the ways we can break out of these norms is for us as women and men to try and build our own sayings about women, not to say, okay, this is our culture, so we're gonna go with this. Like, for example, there's this Kikuyu proverb that says, uh, a woman and an invalid are the same. And then we carry on saying it based on it's our culture. You know, this work is about breaking norms, and I really want to encourage the audience to think twice about these problems. My name is Manyata Miyamani, and I was born in Mamilori, which is in Victoria, uh, but I'm currently staying in Joburg. As a photographer, we all have um, different things that we want to do. There's landscapes, there's fashion, but then, you know, there's also that thing of wanting to get into the art mainstream, you know, to be that artist, but still using photography as a medium to represent the art that you you want to tell that you feel you know the world should know so i think this is a great platform to do it with the latier now straight away i see a drum influence on these pictures i mean that, that these pictures are straight out of drum magazine from 
the early 60s and 50s. Um, do you draw inspiration from people like Peter Magabani or any of those photographers? Jane Schneiderberg, yep. definitely, definitely. Um, so actually, when I did do this project, those were the kind of people that I were looking at because the the participants that are in the images are people that are 60 and above. So I also needed to understand where they're coming from and you know, how they were photographed then and what is it that they like. So when I did speak to them about what my project is about and and, um, what I want to do and if they want to be part of it um, they would agree and so I don't tell them where I should photograph them so they're the ones that tell me where they need to be photographed so I think that actually helped a lot you know referencing all those photographers as well you know to come back to okay Granny wants to be photographed. Yeah, you know, so it's more of a collaborative thing um, than just me being a photographer and trying to get the story out there. So it's more them also telling their story in their own way as well, which is important. Thank you so much to Absa for having me at the media breakfast today. I'm so sorry I couldn't attend the event last night. And congratulations to Marla Bellari, who is this year's 2017 winner. And thank you, Absa, for this really stunning book it still smells like a brand new book i love that still nothing better in this digital era than to hold a book in your hand and look at work that way other than that i'm out of here joe Buck, you have a fantastic day we've got some great stories coming up over the next few days and i'll chat to you again soon don't forget to subscribe hit the button down here somewhere down there hit subscribe invite your friends and i'll chat to you soon cheers joe Buck. <laughs>